Today in the workshop, we're resolving I2C address conflicts. I'll show you how to hook up two OLED displays that use the same I2C address and send them different data. We're playing mediator today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop. And today we're back working with the I2C bus. Now we've done a number of videos about this bus. We started off by learning what the I2C bus is, how it goes under a number of different names, such as I squared C, IIC, TWI bus, and we learned how it works with a series of slave devices communicating with a master. In the second video, we learned how we could take an Arduino and turn it into a slave device, and we also built our own I2C sensor. And the third video we covered how we could deal with different logic levels on the bus by interfacing our 3.3 volt Raspberry Pi with a 5 volt Arduino. Well today we are going to discuss a problem that you can run into when using this bus. It's a very common problem and that is of address conflicts. What happens when you have two slave devices that need to use the same address? So let's go and take a detailed look at what what this problem is and then I'll show you how we can solve it. Now as you recall the I2C bus is a two-wire bus. One wire is the clock signal and the other wire is the data signal. The bus has a master device. The master device controls all of the devices on the bus and it is the only one that initiates communication. The master does not have an address assigned to it. We can begin by adding a slave device to our bus. Now this slave device has an address of hexadecimal 28, so the master can communicate with that device by addressing it directly. We can add another slave device to the bus. This device has another address, hexadecimal 19, and the master can communicate with the two devices individually. However, now we're going to add a third device, another slave device that also has an address of hexadecimal 28. This is an address conflict and is not acceptable in the I2C bus. On the I2C bus, all I2C slave devices must have a unique address. Now some I2C slave devices, such as sensors and displays, have configurable addresses. These devices use jumpers, switches, solder pads, or external address connections to alter their base I2C address. However, many devices have a fixed I2C address, and these are not alterable. Unfortunately, there's no formal regulation of I2C addresses, so it is entirely possible for two manufacturers to make a device that has the same address. To resolve this problem, we need a second I2C bus. The master can connect to this bus and therefore be connected to two independent I2C buses. We can now connect one of our conflicting slaves to the second bus and resolve all of our conflicts. Now the way to resolve the issue of having multiple slaves with the same address is to simply have more than one I2C bus and put each slave on its own individual bus. Now some single board computers actually have this arrangement. They have multiple I2C buses and so you can just put your slaves on each of the different buses and you won't run into any address conflicts. But with the Arduino there is only one I2C bus. The Raspberry Pi actually has a second I2C bus but the the second bus is limited to communicating with the hats, the hardware attached on top expansion boards that you put on a Raspberry Pi, so it can't be used for additional sensors. So with these devices we have to look at other methods of adding additional I2C buses. Now there is a method with the Arduino of doing this in software, and it does have its limitations, but it's worth looking at. So let's take a look at some software implementations of multiple I2C buses on the Arduino. The software solutions to our problem involve the use of alternate I2C libraries. These libraries are used in place of the built-in Arduino wire library. These libraries will allow I2C connections on different I.O. pins. 
They will also allow for multiple I2C buses. Let's look at some libraries. Soft I2C Master has been implemented by Todd E. Kurt. The last update as of this video was January 26, 2017. The library is available on GitHub. Soft I2C Master is a simple I2C software implementation. It comes with three example sketches, including an I2C scanner. Softwire is a library implemented by Steve Marple. As of this recording, the last update was on June the 3rd, 2018. Softwire is also available on GitHub. Softwire is an I2C software implementation that uses basic Arduino functions to allow any pin to be used for I2C. This library is dependent upon another library called Async Delay. It comes with two example sketches. Software I2C has been implemented by Seed Studio. As of this recording, the last update was April 2, 2018. This is available on Seed Studio's wiki and also on GitHub. Software I2C is another implementation of I2C that is also documented on the Seed Studio wiki. It comes with additional Seed Studio libraries to use in an example sketch. It comes with two examples, an I2C scanner and a multiple OLED display sketch. A software implementation of multiple I2C buses might seem to be the ideal solution. After all, you don't need to buy any extra hardware and it cuts down the wiring complexity, but there are some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is that most of these systems only allow the Arduino to act as a master, but I don't see that as being a huge drawback personally. A second drawback is that some of these take a bit more memory. Again, I don't see that as being a real problem. But one real problem is that a lot of the libraries we use with I2C sensors are actually dependent upon the wire library, the Arduino IDE's built-in I2C library. And they call the wire library functions within them. Now you need to go and edit those libraries and replace them with the calls to your software library. And while this isn't that difficult a job to do, it means now you have a library that is dependent upon this other I2C implementation and not the wire library. And to me that gets a bit complex. However, I wouldn't completely eliminate using these software I2C implementations. One thing they are good at is using alternate pins for I2C. So if you need, for example, in the Arduino Uno, your analog input A4 and A5 pins for something, you can assign the I2C to C bus to a couple of the digital I.O. pins that you're not using. Also for things like the AT Tiny, which don't actually have an I2C bus, this is an ideal implementation. But the implementation that I like is a hardware implementation. And so we're going to take a look at a component now called an I2C multiplexer that will resolve our problem in hardware. The module we'll be using is the TCA9548A module from Adafruit. This is an 8-channel I2C multiplexer. The device operates on 3 to 5 volts and all of the pins are 5 volt tolerant. The module has internal 10K input pull-up resistors. The outputs do not have pull-up resistors. The module has a base address of hexadecimal 70. There are also three address pins to allow you to change the address. Here are the pinouts of the TCA9548A. The V in is the power, which can be from 3 to 5 volts DC. GND, of course, is the ground. SDA is the input I2C data. SCL is the input I2C clock. The RST pin is a reset pin and is normally left unconnected. A0, A1, and A2 allow you to set the I2C address. Channel 0 is represented by SD0, which is the SDA line for channel 0, and SC0, which is the SCL line. There are similar pins for channels 1 through channel 7. The TCA9548A is available in other modules as well. 
Some of these modules do have pull-up resistors on the output pins. Now this is the Adafruit TCA9548A module, and it's the one I'll be using in our experiments. Now you can get this module in other form factors and from other manufacturers as well, but I like the Adafruit module. It's nicely made, as all Adafruit products are, and it's got the connection silt screened on the board to make it easy to hook up. Now on the back you'll find a couple of solder pads. The ones on the right are ones that you can cut if you want to disable the internal 10k pull-up resistors. Now remember those are the pull-up resistors on the input I2C. The outputs do not have pull-up resistors. So you'll have to add them yourself or use slave devices that already have integrated pull-up resistors. The three pads on the left can be used to alter the I2C base address. By itself it's hexadecimal 70, but if that conflicts with something or if you want to use more than one of these modules, you can change it with those pads by jumping them over and you can make it any address from hex 70 to hex 77. Now those connections are also brought to the outside of the module so you don't have to use the pads you can do it externally as well. Now one other device I want to show you is based on a similar chip. This is a shield for the Arduino and it's based on the TCA 9544 which is a four channel multiplexer not an eight channel multiplexer but it's a shield and it has has the four outputs over here and it has also an output for the base I2C if you want to use that. And so if you want a solution in the form of a shield, if that's easier for you, you might want to look at a module like this as well. So now let's go and start using our multiplexer. Now those of you who've watched the DroneBot workshop videos for a while may recall that about a year or so ago I did a video on using OLED displays, organic light emitting diodes. And in that video, in one scene, I took an OLED display that had a fixed address, I took a second one that was identical, hooked them both up on a solderless breadboard, and tied them to an Arduino I2C bus. Since both of them had the same address, both displays showed exactly the same thing. And this might actually have some practical uses. For example, you might want to build a project which has a display on both the front and the back and you want both displays to be identical. However, we're going to expand upon that today. We're going to use our I2C multiplexer and connect each display to a different channel of the multiplexer. And then we're going to modify one of the other sketches that we use in that same OLED video, the temperature and humidity meter, and we're going to use it to display the temperature on one OLED display and the humidity on the other one. So let's go and take a look at the hookup for that and then I'll show you the code that we can use with our multiplexer in order to achieve this. For our demonstration we're going to be using an Arduino Uno, a TCA9548A I2C multiplexer, an AM2320 I2C temperature and humidity sensor, and two SSD1306 or equivalent OLED displays. We'll also require some pull-up resistors. I used four 2.2K resistors, but you can use any value from 2.2 to 10K and that will work fine. We'll begin by connecting the five volt output of the Arduino to the V-in pin on the TCA9548A. Next, we'll connect the Arduino's ground to the ground pin on the I2C multiplexer. We'll also connect the 5 volts to pin 1 of the AM2320 and the ground to pin 3. Next we'll connect the 5 volts to the VDD pins on both of the OLED displays and we'll connect the ground to the ground pins on the OLED. Next we'll connect the analog input A4 on the Arduino to the SDA input on the TCA9548A. Analog pin A5 will be connected to the SCL input on the I2C multiplexer. We'll also connect the SDA line to pin 2 on the AM2320 temperature and humidity sensor. And we'll connect the SCL line to pin 4 on the sensor. We'll connect the SD1 pin to the SDA connection on one of our OLED displays. We'll connect the SC1 pin to the SCL connection on the same OLED. We'll connect the SD2 pin 
to the SDA pin on the other OLED display, and the SC2 pin will be connected to the SCL pin on that display. Finally, we'll connect the 5 volts to one side of each of the dropping resistors. We'll connect the other side of the dropping resistors to the SDA and SCL inputs of the OLED. And this completes our wiring. Now here's the sketch that we're going to be using to drive our two OLED displays. Now this is a modified version of a sketch that I used previously in my OLED video. Now we're going to start off by including the wire library. This is the built-in library in your Arduino IDE for using I2C devices. The next few libraries, however, are not built in and you'll need to install them by going into your library manager and searching for them if you haven't got them already. The first one is the Adafruit Graphics Library and you can just search for Adafruit Graphics. The second one is the Adafruit OLED Library for the SSD1306 OLED displays. The third one is the Adafruit library for the AM2320 temperature and humidity sensors. So you'll need to install those libraries and include them in your sketch. Now we're going to start by defining a reset pin for the OLED. This is actually not used electrically, but it's required for the library. So we just define this with a value as 4 as required by our display. Next is where the sketch differs from my original sketch in that I need to create an object for each of the independent OLEDs. So I'm calling the objects Display1 and Display2. Then I define an object called AM2320 to represent the temperature and humidity sensor. Now this function here, which is actually provided by Adafruit, is a function that is the key to working with the I2C bus multiplexer. This is essentially forming a switch, and what you do is you pass it the number of the channel that you want to use. And what the function does is it goes and it talks to the channel and then passes your data over to it and then ends the transmission. In other words, this acts as a switch. Now the 70 over here is the address of the TCA 9548A. You can change the address on this device by altering the A0, A1, and A2 pins, and if you do that you'll need to change the address in your sketch accordingly. Now we have function called display temp, and the temperature is going to be displayed on display number one. And so what we do is we clear display number one, we set the color to white, even if the display is physically a different color, we always use white. We set the font size, I set it to 2 so it would be visible. And then we set the cursor to a position on the display, I moved it down a bit toward the center. Then we print out the letter T in a colon with a space after it. Then we print the value TEM, which we passed in the function, and this is a float representing the actual temperature. And then we do a space and print a C because we're displaying our temperature in Celsius. Now display humid does a similar thing except we're going to be using display number 2 and passing it the humidity value. Now let's go into our setup. In the setup we'll start the I2C library with a wire begin and we'll also initialize a temperature and humidity sensor. Now we've got to initialize the individual displays, but remember, we need to use the multiplexer and switch out to that channel first. So we call our function and pass it a 1, meaning we want to go to channel number 1. And then we do a display begin. And then we do the same thing for channel number 2, a new display begin. So we're switching our channels before we send the command out, and that's the key to working with the multiplexer. Now the loop is actually pretty simple. We start off with a two second delay and this allows the temperature and humidity sensor to stabilize and then we go and read the temperature and the humidity and we assign it to two different floats. Then we set the multiplexer to channel number one where we want to display the temperature and we call our display temp function and pass it the value of temperature and then after that we refresh our display. And after that, we go and do the same thing for channel number two. We switch to channel number two, call display humid and pass it the humidity value and refresh the display. And then we go back and do everything over again. And so this should result in the temperature being displayed on display number one and the humidity on display number two. So let's go and check it out. 
And here we have our demonstration running, and as you can see, it seems to work pretty well. Now the top display is display number one, and it's displaying the temperature, and the bottom one, display number two, is displaying humidity. And remember, both of these displays have the same fixed I2C address, and yet we're able to drive them independently from the Arduino because of the TCA 9548A multiplexer. Now you can see the multiplexer back over here on the top, and down down here buried a bit in the wires is a temperature and humidity sensor plus you might be able to note the pull-up resistors back over here. So that's really all there is to it. The multiplexer seems to work as advertised and it is sending the data independently to both displays. Now here's another use for the TCA 9548A. In our example we'll use a 5 volt microcontroller attached to the input thus putting 5 volts DC on the VIN pin on the TCA 9548A. We'll attach I2C connections to channel 7 of the multiplexer, as well as power and ground connections and a 5 volt power supply. This creates a 5 volt I2C bus. We may now attach 5 volt I2C slaves to our new bus. We can also attach another I2C bus to the multiplexer on channel 3, this one using a 3.3 volt power supply and 3.3 volt sensors. We can attach as many different buses as we wish with independent power supply voltages. Just make sure to tie the ground of all the buses together. This example also works equally well with a 3.3 volt microcontroller. The TCA 9548A is always powered by the host microcontroller, but you can mix and match bus voltages as you wish to increase the flexibility of your design. So having multiple I2C slave devices with the same address is not the end of the world. In fact, I've shown you two different methods you can resolve it, one using software and another one using a piece of hardware. And by implementing multiple I2C buses, you can also help resolve another I2C issue. The I2C bus is limited to approximately one meter of total cable length, and that's because of the cable capacitance will eventually degrade the signal. Now, if you have multiple I2C buses, each one of those buses is subject to that same limitation. So you can have much more total cable and run many more I2C sensors and displays around your product. Project. In fact, I'm using that same technique in my DB1 robot to run I2C sensors around the robot chassis. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about what we talked about today, you'll find an article accompanying this video on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website, and there'll be a link to that article right below the video. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the DroneBot Workshop, you can subscribe to our newsletter. The newsletter comes out about every two weeks. It's not a sales letter. It's just my way of letting you know what's going on here in the workshop. Now, I make videos approximately once a week, but sometimes I miss out on one. So the best way to find out about new videos is to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, click on that little bell notification. And that way you'll be notified every time I make new content. And finally, if you'd like to discuss today's video, or if you'd like to discuss electronics with some like-minded people, or if you'd like to make suggestions about new videos and articles you'd like to see, the place to go is the DroneBot Workshop forums at forum.dronebotworkshop.com and I hope to see you on the forum very soon. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and I hope to see you again very soon here in the DroneBot Workshop. Goodbye for now.